Next speaker is uh, Dr. Amruta Shri A. And uh, will be speaking on a challenging case of ocular trauma by an umbrella in a child. I'll be presenting a case, challenging case of ocular trauma by an umbrella in a child. Apart from workplace injuries, most commonly children are the ones who encounter ocular trauma while playing. The management and prognosis depend on the type, composition, and location of the foreign body. Large foreign bodies do have the risk of intracranial penetration as well as high risk of secondary infection. Transorbital foreign bodies can even penetrate intracranial, in which case we need the, to take a help of a neurosurgeon. Though it's rare, there are reported ocular injuries with various parts of an umbrella like its width stretcher, metal hinge and wire leading to penetrating injury. While the handle and the shaft can cause blunt trauma due to the force applied from the handle of a release spring mechanism on an umbrella. Here is a case of an 8-year-old boy presented with accidental injury to left eye while playing with an umbrella, came with complaints of pain and foreign body in the left eye. Patient was brought to casualty with the metal hinge of the umbrella stuck to the left eye. An anterior segment showed the metal hinge of the umbrella, which was noted subconjunctivally in the nasal aspect of the eye. Globe, however, appeared intact and IOP was digitally normal. This was a metal hinge which was stuck to the left eye and great care was taken by the attenders while shifting the patient to keep the foreign body undisturbed. A provisional diagnosis was made as penetrating subconjunctival foreign body with query occult scleral tear and the patient was taken up for globe exploration under general anesthesia. It was noted that the foreign body had penetrated nasally with superior extension to the frontal bone and there was no evidence of any occult scleral tear. It was carefully dissected from the subconjunctival space and externalized. After ruling out scleral tear, the residual conjunctiva was sutured. This is the post-operative anterior segment. On x-ray, there was no evidence of foreign body-related orbital fracture and posterior segment was normal. Accidental ocular trauma are common in children. Eye injuries due to the umbrella are about 18%. Umbrella can be a source of grievous ocular injury ranging from blunt trauma, penetrating trauma, and orbital fractures. While the handle and the shaft can cause blunt trauma due to the force applied by the handle of a release spring mechanism. Umbrella-related injury can be very severe with intracranial damage as reported by Noda et al. in 2010 about a case of perforating eyelid injury caused by the metal tip of an umbrella leading to edema of the brain due to the penetration of the umbrella tip. In 2016, Raman et al. reported a case of transorbital penetrating intracranial injury with an umbrella wire. The patient had removed the umbrella wire by himself which had traversed the SOF leading to cavernous in internal carotid artery injury and thrombosis. We were lucky that our patient was brought with the hinge of the umbrella stuck to the eye in situ which helped us in removing the foreign body with minimal ocular damage. In another case reported by Norton et al, a child had an upper lid laceration involving the superior canaliculus but due to disproportionate swelling of the upper lid when the CT was done, a cribriform plate fracture with a fracture leak extending to the roof and anterior cranial fossa was noted. But there was no evidence of any CSF leak. In our case, we were fortunate since there was no intraocular penetration, neither intracranial extension of the injury, and the metal hinge was confined to the subconjunctival space. In conclusion, children should be monitored and they should not be left unattended while playing. The key is to be aware of what types of objects and situations have potential cause injury to exercise caution. The quick arrival of the patient after the injury without any delay and the prompt action in cutting the umbrella played an important role in outcomes of surgery. Removing large foreign bodies, patenders or bystanders can cause more damage to the eye and other structures. Thus, it's always better to dismantle the distal part of the foreign body and to plan surgical intervention to, after knowing the extent of the wound on the table in the OT itself. One should keep in mind the possibility of orbital tissue damage, orbital wall fracture, associated intracranial injury in these types of large orbital foreign bodies and look for associated symptoms clinically. These are my references. Thank you.